That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Spiderhead, the fifth film directed by Joseph Kosinski, which premieres on Netflix June 17th, 2022. Another uh, Chris Hemsworth Netflix film. Uh, notably, Mr. Kosinski is still reaping the considerable benefits of having directed Top Gun Maverick. Oh, the person who directed Top Gun Maverick directed this movie? Yes. Uh, oh. Which Miles Teller also uh, is featured in. Uh, we So we just reviewed uh, that film recently, but he also did Tron Legacy, Oblivion, starring Tom Cruise. Whoa. Um, Only the Brave with Josh Brolin. Uh, so yeah, kind of a considerable uh, couple of films to have under his belt. I didn't care for this thing. Uh, I didn't either. It has initial promise, but it ultimately I feel... Things, I think it feels way too small for the scope of what it's doing. I think considering the subject matter, it could have been a lot more subversive. Mm -hmm. and I, yes. And I don't think that the choice to have sort of, you know, Chris Hemsworth is really good at sort of adding a little sort of cheekiness to things. Mm -hmm. Which he tries to hear, yeah. And he tries to hear, and I think it's so, like... I, was, I wasn't cringing at him. It just feels kind of I'm not, I, no, superfluous. Yeah, it, uh, anyway, the basic story is, oh, we have, and I didn't think about, I think Spiderhead is a cool name for a movie, but I don't know what that has to do with this movie. You can think about it. So the basic story is, well, I think the multiple uh, things in the head, like legs in the head. <laughs> oh, Spiderheads have, don't spiders have multiple eyes? They have a lot of eyes too. Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe that's it. <laughs> well, look at the, the, the contraption of what administers the drug. Oh, I guess that could kind of be a spider head. With the eyes. Okay. Perhaps. The basic story is there is like a like a a prison slash research center on the coast somewhere mm -hmm. called Spiderhead. Mm -hmm. And there's research being done there testing different drugs, like mood stabilizers. So we focus on two characters, Miles Teller and Playing Jeff and uh, Chris Hemsworth is Steve Abnesti. No, I met Juicy's sister. Oh, Journey Smollett. Journey Smollett. Whose name is Lizzie. Lizzie. So, Miles and Journey. So, Miles is the main character. He's being tested on. And it's all presented like this is a privilege. You'd be in, like, federal prison if you weren't approved to come here. And they have a very nice lifestyle. It's like all those memes about prison in like Norway. Yeah. Where it's like very, like they're, they're free and comfortable and they can roam around and whatever. But they are being tested on with these drugs, which are administered with some pack that's adhered to their body. Like, I don't know, like one of those insulin packs that whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. These mood stabilizers like make people laugh, make them like, uh, aggressive, uh, make them feel like sexual feelings, so on and so forth. Love. But everything culminates with Miles Teller's character is thinking that this is legitimate research that the government's doing to help people. Mm -hmm. But he finds out that this is not a government thing. Chris Hemsworth keeps pretending that he just works for like the, like the system and he's just following protocol. But really... This is like his situation. Like Chris Hemsworth is in control. So once Miles Teller realizes that and he finds out that what he's really testing is this drug that will make people obedient. So all these little pieces are just pieces to this overall formulation that will basically like make people slaves. So obviously there are very serious implications to that. So with the help of Journey, the police come it's important to know Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth's character is wearing one of those packs, mm -hmm. so he's drugging himself because it can also make you feel good, right? So they end up like giving him a lethal dose, so he dies. The police come. The end. That's kind of a truncated version of his demise, but yeah, I think you kind of clocked out by then. But it just it feels long. I I think it's such an interesting premise, but then every time we see these people being tested on, it feels a little like. It is, and besides the flashbacks of how Miles Teller, what he did to end up being there, we we really are contained in this place that is set in this building. It reminded me kind of of like Catherine Keener's headquarters in the Adam Project, just this this gargantuan, isolated building. Let's start with why Miles and Journey are in prison, okay. because 
Typically in film or in stories where prisoners are being exper experimented on, you know, the way these researchers sort of um, re release themselves from like the unethical component of it is they think, well, these are like horrible criminals who've done horrible things. So of course, the film is sort of skirting around what Miles and Journey did. So for Miles, we see that he was like driving, got into an accident, and his like best friend was killed. So like vehicular manslaughter like he didn't mean to kill this person but so so there's that then we see that miles teller gets like phone privileges and he calls his wife who never picks up and then in the end we find out she's not picking up because she also died in that car accident yeah i don't know i don't know why. i don't understand what purpose it served to keep the audience like I don't Who know. cares why he's in prison in the first place if it's not going to be for something heinous? Well, right. Why give him and her an out uh, for, for being like potentially reprehensible people? Because Journey is in prison because she accidentally left her kid in the car at Walmart and the kid died from like heat exposure. And I don't think she looks like a woman that works at Walmart. But, but it's like uh, she also didn't mean to do it. Like, right, right. So there, there's that ridiculousness. But why the sanitizing of Miles Teller's uh, flashbacks when... Another component of this, the, some of these prisoners are allowing themselves to go through these things because they feel this guilt that they deserve to be kind of guinea pigs, at least for his character. So that would be prominence in all the flashbacks is his, his, the love of his life dying. <laughs> Rather well, than we see, right. we see an abridged version of it, which doesn't make any sense. I also don't like that all of the other prisoners seem like bad people. Like, they all seem like stereotypical, like, you know, prisoners. And look rough. And look rough and are mean. But then Journey and Miles seem like really reasonable, sweet people who don't mm -hmm. belong there. And, and you know, part of Chris Hemsworth's downfall is he kind of develops a strange friendship with Jeff a little bit. And he has a little sidekick named Mark. Max. Max. Or is it Mark? <laughs> okay, that's oh. another thing that I didn't like. So... When we find out that Chris Hemsworth is, you know, we get no backstory on how he's getting access to his prisoners, what government agency or correctional department. Uh, how often they get new ones. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, we don't know anything about that. And that's fine. We don't need to. But then it's like, clearly what Chris Hemsworth's character is doing is unethical and risky. Mm -hmm. So you would think that his right hand man would be someone who is like ride or die. No, this little guy looks like he just started last week and has a little hoodie and he, every scene from the very beginning, he looks unsure about what's happening, but he knows everything. I just thought that characterization made no sense. Like why would this Chris Hemsworth character entrust this guy who seems so dubious with all of his secrets? Plus the, the, the usual things that are going on when somebody, some nefarious top secret experiment is happening in a secluded area where clear you know uh hemsworth is taking his own drugs you want to me this that read like islander dr moreau to me is this this system on the verge of collapse and uh, and then of course you think about all of the classic tropes of like a clockwork orange or um aldous huxley all over the place and even a bit of, of uh, love potion number nine yes i think you know, with these like sort of like psychotropic moods that what whatever kind of drugs he's giving them, I feel like it needed to have a more surreal feel to mm -hmm. it. Which it, uh, Miles, but it tells, feels very sanitized. It does. It does because there's a scene where it because we see him have sex with two different women after taking this uh, Lovatin or whatever because they have like funny names. These drug names are so stupid too. Um, Laffodil, I thought it was making. What's the me one laugh. that makes them in pain? Darken flocks. Darken flocksin or whatever. Darken. <laughs> Darken flocking. We watched him have sex with two different women. One of whose looks pretty rough. Uh, and then this. Uh, and she gives him an STI, I think. Yes, and then <laughs> and then there's a this this large man comes in, and the the insinuation is that these two are going to have sex. And Miles Teller's like, no, no, no. I mean, it's fine if you are, but I, I don't want to do that. But to me, if you were really um, testing obedience, right. This is where you would be going in these 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 you know gray zones uh i find it funny that the ultimate obedient strain is called b6 oh it's important like, to know that all the drug sort of the components come from like a bingo card yeah, yeah, yeah. which is supposed to imply like he's playing with people's lives um but you said b6 because well the vitamins and then oh. i wanted like a kind of a 
Kesha song. Right. But uh, and and then uh, there's all this this '80s soundtrack because oh my gosh. apparently Hemsworth's character is obsessed with '80s tunes. The money they spent on this music and it's like it's 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 distracting. I mean, there are a couple of scenes where it's like one song ends and immediately they press play on another song. It was it was a bit much. Oh, another film reminded me. I wanted I, initially I was a little excited about because like maybe it'll be like John Frankenheimer's Seconds with which has one of Rock Hudson's best performances ever. Uh, and But I was distracted by um, the placement of this jetpack of fluids that they're injecting with an app. Uh, it's right in the back, in the middle of your, at the bottom of your vertebrae. And it's like, it would be really hard to sit in certain chairs. Uh, well, there, even the assistant says, like, be careful, they're not made for, like, impact. Then why put them where you're going to... They're having like, like and then they're having sex. violent sex. I mean, we're saying it, but it doesn't sound that it's, it doesn't. But I mean, compare something like this to what I thought was a much more brilliant film, like Crimes of the Future, and kind of the ridiculousness of those contraptions, like on the. Um... Oh sure. Because what this doesn't in the back feel very like creative. That. It doesn't feel subversive. It just feel and it's based on a short story. Did you mention that? Oh, George Saunders wrote the short story, and they show one prisoner reading a George Saunders book, which I. That was okay. Uh, I'm sure the short story is compelling. The subject matter is interesting, but this feels very sanitized and. And it makes me. Think I don't like the cheeky elements of some it. Some of the things were accidental, like Miles Teller has this etch a sketch that he's really talented at drawing on, and then when this one character kills herself on, uh, dry, dark and Floxen or whatever, uh, her blood patterns look just like one of his etch a sketch drawings with the perfect lines. What else you got? Not much. It was shot by uh, Kosinski's usual DP, uh, Claude Miranda, and it look it looks fine. It just ends up feeling really boring and sterilized, and a, a story that should be a lot more tawdry and, as you could say, subversive. Uh, but there, there was nothing. I don't know. Journey didn't have much to do. I thought. What would you give it? Two. I would give it two out of five as well. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Thank you.